Hey everybody, it's Craig here. Thanks for coming back. Cheers and 17. Today, I'm going to be reviewing a beer that was sent in, and I'm also going to be talking about something that I've been meaning to talk to you about for a while. It's a little bit political, so just a disclaimer there, just a warning. Put your kids to bed. Um, but first, the most important thing here is this beer. Now, I was sent in a whole bunch of beers, eight beers to be exact. And um, a fellow by the name of Ryan, who goes by the alias of RK Dangerously in my chat room on Friday nights during my live radio broadcast. Hint, hint. So, so he sent me a bunch. And the, th the nice thing is, is he printed out sheets for every beer with descriptions and images and all the credentials. So that's really cool. So we're going to start with this one. I don't know how we got water on the table here, but anyway. Um, we're going to start with this one. So what this is, I'll show you the can. The can. There it is right there. And let me get my... I remembered my glasses today. Although oh, they're broken, but it's, it's all right. They're still working. Flying Monkeys Adventure in Time Surfing Double IPA. It says orange, you glad. It says it does say orange. Orange, you glad. There's mango. Blood orange and mango materialize in the shimmering haze of this tangy DIPA adventure. The tang of time traveling. I can't wait. Okay. Inside the recipe. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. We'll talk about that once we pour the beer. Okay. So, different kind of beer. It's been out of the fridge for a few minutes. Ah. Oh, ah, okay, all right, all right, let's give this a pour. Got a nice big glass here, ready? Massage, massage, come on, let's go, you can do this. I chose a larger glass because I, was, I wasn't sure about the what the foam was going to be like. Let's give it a little vigorous at the end there. There we go. Ah. Look at the the, the, the label. It's just really neat. Like I'll, t I'll just turn it slowly. I'll just give it a, a little digital zoom here. It won't be perfectly clear, but you can see the artwork goes into this beer. Okay. So, let's put that there. It's got the Back to the Future sort of thing going on on the thing there. All right. All right. Ah. Oh. oh, I'm not a beer reviewer, okay? So this whole video is not going to be about this. It's going to be about another thing. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at the, uh, it's very, it looks like, you know what? It looks like orange juice, grapefruit juice, actually. That's what it looks like. Um, you can't see through it. I mean, it's opaque, right? And I can definitely smell the hops. But that's about all. So let's give it a taste and then we'll talk. Look at that nice foam. Mm. Give it a taste and then we'll talk about what's in it. Okay. Cheers. Oh, oh wow. I taste mostly hops. Um... I don't get much of the mango. Well, it's, a, it's not a bad, it's an excellent beer. Really, it is beautiful. Oh, um, and I gotta take it easy. None of these beers that he sent me are under 8% ABV. <clears throat> so I'm starting to wonder if the guy is, um, you know, works for a liver transplant agency or something. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> Brian, I'm just joking. So, uh, not Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So many names. Let's give it another world, and it'll tell you what's in it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I do taste a little bit of fruitiness to it in there. Definitely. Um. I do taste some. That it's very subtle. Because a lot of people don't like fruity beers, you know. But it's just, it comes in afterwards. So it's just there. 
But if I didn't, I'll tell you, I'll be honest, if I hadn't read that piece, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, have detected uh, the mango. But you know what? Mangoes are, oh, excuse me, I know what they taste like. I'm not a beer reviewer. Cause there's a reason I don't review beers professionally or, you know, take it seriously on YouTube because I'm not very good at it. Okay, so th with that said, I'm glad to, you know, tell you my opinion on these beers. There's a beer in here that's from a um, Creative Merits. Is it Creative Merits? No. Collective Arts. I don't know where I got Creative Merits from. Collective Arts Brewery, which my my niece works at. So I'll be doing that one at some point. And I've asked my sister if, if she wants to bring home some free beer, I'll review them. So anyway, let's just check what's in it. Um, inside the recipe. Let's see. Stay close to the microphone. The ABV is 8.2%. Um, the IBUs is 46. So it's not really high. Malts. Two row. Pale malt. Red X, oats. The hops are Cascade, Citra, Azaka, and Sabro. Dry hopping, Citra, Azaka, Sabro. Special editions, mango puree and blood orange juice concentrate. So, excellent, Ryan. Thank you. This is my first installment of Ryan's Beers. Ryan's Beer Mail. Let's call it. Cheers. Mm. Slightly the orange is coming through as it's warming up. Um, but really, it's a beer. So don't be afraid of it. If you're not into fruit beers, it's not a fruit beer. It's a IPA with a hint of these other elements in it. And they are just there um, enough that if you read the piece, you can taste them. And maybe if you're a better beer reviewer than I am, you might be able to taste them without reading this, okay? So, thanks, Ryan. It's an excellent beer. I'm going to enjoy this while I talk to you guys about something. And this is kind of serious. No, my health is fine. Don't worry about that. Um, and everybody's fine around me. But it's just something that I've noticed. So, and as I sip this beer and as it warms up, I'll interject and tell you if there's any differences in the flavor as it warms. Carbonation is excellent, by the way. It's really, It's really nice. Good beer. Nice IPA. Highly recommended. Um, I've noticed over the last few years, especially during this political time that we've been in. Now, I, I live in Canada. So I don't live in the United States. But what you guys real, need to realize is that us up here in Canada, a lot of us follow American politics because it affects us. It affects everybody. And um, so, you know, we kind of want to know what's going on. So I've been following all the way through this whole administration and the last administration and all that stuff for the, in the United States. And, uh, you know, as an outsider, I can't vote. Um, but I have been following and I have my opinions. So now I'm not here to discuss those opinions because some of you might already know, but it doesn't matter. The thing is, is that I've tried to talk to people about, because you know, in, if you live in the United States, you know there's two sides, right? There's what's called the left and what's called the right. And I reversed that for you guys because I'm on camera. Um, and you know, there's two sides of the aisle. And the problem is, is that sometimes when one side tries to explain to the other side why they believe what they believe or maybe post videos on Facebook demonstrating some of the faults that the other side of the aisle might have. Um, people tend to just, they don't like it. People on that other side of the aisle, they go, I, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear this. And then there's arguments and all this crap that goes on. You know, you post it one day, you go back the next day thinking, hey, maybe I got through to somebody. Pfft. <laughs> not going to happen. I've learned my lesson. So, um, and I don't think that's right. And I've actually lost friends on Facebook because of this. 
You're like, Craig, that's what he believes? Oh, pfft, gone. What the hell? That's childish. You know, everybody needs to listen to both sides, I think. I mean, there's a lot of people that just come home from work and they go and listen to one particular news network and that's it. And you believe everything they say. Some, some of you don't watch the news and that's good. That's probably best, really. You know, I mentioned a particular news network once on, an, on a Facebook post and I got like ridiculed for it. Like, what are you, why are you ridiculing me? This is what I believe to be true. Oh, they're liars. They're liars. They lie all the time. How do you know they lie? If you don't really know the truth, because you don't know if you do. Because you're listening to the other one. How do you know they're not lying? Right? So everything is being looked at through lenses, right? And what you have to do is figure out which lens seems to make the most sense. And the only way that you can do that is try them both. When you go to get glasses prescribed, you don't just try on one pair and go, perfect. They put all kinds of lenses in front of your eyes until you find the one that makes the most sense to you. A lot of people haven't done that. They just follow along with whatever news network they watched says, and that's the end of it. You know, I'm going to tell you something. There's a guy way, way back hundreds of years ago whose name was Galileo Galilei. You might remember this fellow. Not that you were alive when he was around, but you might remember his face. And you might even remember what he did. Galileo was, a, was an astronomer. And he, amongst other things, he was a philosopher and lots of things, but he was a, an astronomer. And he, um, he had a telescope, okay? And he was able to look up into the sky um, and look at the stars and look at how things worked and how they moved. See, back then they thought that the, um, the, the Earth was the center of the universe and that the sun and the moon, and not the moon, but the sun and all the other bodies revolved around the Earth. They thought that we were the center of everything. And Galileo, through his observations, discovered that that's not so. And of course, now we all know that that's not true. He discovered that the sun was the center of a, 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 of a um, solar system, as we call it today, where the sun's in the center, and then the Earth and all the other planets revolve around the sun. A little bit of a different picture there, isn't it? than the old one, where the Earth is the center of the system. Well, he was arrested. He was arrested, and he was put on house arrest. And he, he said to them, he said, you know what? If you don't believe me, look at it for yourself. There's my telescope. Look at it. You'll see. The prosecutors and the people who didn't believe his theory wouldn't even look through the telescope. Physically, this is a true story, they physically wouldn't walk up to the telescope and look for themselves. They didn't want to know. They did not want to know because they were afraid of being removed from their comfort zone. And they would have had to relearn everything that they thought they knew. Isn't that interesting how humans do that? Isn't it interesting? So finally, <clears throat> once people started to take look, take a look and see what they were what was going on, it revolutionized the um, you know, the astronomy at that point. Now people started to realize, holy crap, this guy's right. He's right. Right? So <clears throat> That's just an example of what I've experienced. People, they just don't, no, 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 I, I, I don't, no, nope, don't want to know, don't care, don't want to watch. I've asked people, I said, look, why don't you just spend one week, just one week, watching a different news network, one that does the other side, just to see 
maybe you try to understand why some of your friends believe what they believe. Because a lot of people just fight and argue and know you're wrong, they lie, da, 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 you know. And you know, but you know, you, you don't really know who's lying, do you? Because you're not there. So spend just spend one week, get away from mm -mm 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 network and go over to mm -mm 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 network where they have different points of view and just watch and just see the logic. I don't care which side you're on or whatever. Try it. It might piss you off or maybe you'll think, hmm. Now, I have a, I have a, pr a preference myself, which I don't feel like they need to discuss here. Um, but let's just say, I know I'm not going to say it. You can try to guess because I'm doing left and right and I'm, I'm mixing them up and I'm not trying to indicate what my preference is. But I think a lot of people on one particular side are very angry when you try to talk to them about your side, if you know what I mean. And this is not a left and a right thing I'm doing here because my left is here, but that's your right. So it doesn't make any sense what I'm doing, which side I'm picking. Don't try to use that as an indicator. I, I just think that some people, and I did it on Facebook, you mentioned something, people get mad, they go, oh, you know, they unfriend you, and they unfriend you and everything. And it just, and I've had arguments with friends uh, that I no longer talk to now, unfortunately. Not my fault. I, I'll talk to them, but they've, they're, they're mad at me because I believe something that they don't. Okay. So I have another small story for you. Let's see what this is doing. Mm. If this was the beer that I could get every time I went to the beer store and bought cheap beer, it's not cheap beer, by the way, I would love to drink this a lot. It's very nice. It's soothing. Hops are great. They, they relax you. Um, and of course, the alcohol doesn't, <laughs> doesn't harm you either. Well, it does, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Um, so it's very nice, warming up a little, and it's a very soothing, nice beer to sit and talk over. Um, I had a New Year's party one year. Uh, this is quite a few years ago. And we had a bunch of friends over, and we always play music, and, you know, we, stereos are cranked up and all this kind of thing. And I was kind of, I was sort of the guy who used to run the music. I was a DJ. And um, so a friend of mine came over. Like, I've never really been a big fan of Elvis Presley. Like, I like him. I mean, he's great. You know, he was great for the for when he was around. And he did great things, and he had huge fans. And holy crap, I mean, women would just fall down in front of his feet, you know. Um, But, I, you know, I've never really, you know, I wasn't a big fan or anything like that. So these people all come over, and my friend comes over, and he comes up to me, and he goes... I got this CD. It's full of Elvis stuff. I want you to play some of this tonight. Could I please transfer this onto your hard drive so that you can just double click them and play them? I said, sure, sure, sure. I'll create a folder. You can put them in there and that way I'll know where to find them and I can delete them tomorrow. <laughs> right? So he did it. He put them on there. We ripped the CD onto the computer, and then, you know, we played some of the songs. It was nice. It was great. You know, Elvis, hey, you can't go wrong with Elvis. I mean, what the heck, right? So the next day, I get up, and I'm sitting in front of the computer, and I'm thinking, okay, so let me clean, because I didn't have a lot of hard drive space back then. This was like 15 years ago. Um, get up and go, okay, let me find this Elvis folder so I can get rid of it, so I can, you know, free up the space. And I thought to myself... You know, my friend's a pretty smart guy. I mean, he's very smart. And he has a very musical ear. Um, what's, he, what's he going? What's he fussing about with Elvis? What's he going on about? You know, he's not an idiot. I started thinking, you know, what, what, what's, he, you know what's he doing? Like, how come he's freaking out over Elvis? Maybe I should, maybe I should investigate this. Because he believes in this. He believes in, you know, this these recordings that he brought to me. So I thought, okay, you know what? I'm not going to delete this right now. 
I'm going to give this a whirl. You see, I could have just swept it off the table, said, nope, not going to do it. But instead, I said, you know what? I'll entertain this. I will give this a shot. I will figure out what he's all on about when it comes to Elvis. Well, I started listening to the, the tracks, which were all remastered, which is not always a good thing, but in this case it was. And I started listening to these things with headphones on. I was very, very impressed to the point where I was absolutely astonished at how good this stuff sounded. And I, I thought to myself, you know what? I nearly deleted all of this. I, I nearly said to myself, no, no, I'm not going to listen to it. But instead, I gave it a chance. I opened up my mind to that side of things. Like, you get my point? And I said, you know what? I will entertain this. For one week, I will listen to this CD. And lo and behold, 15 years later, I still have that folder on my computer. And it is wonderful. So, you know, I don't, I don't I could give you several more examples of this. And in this world where politics is so important, yet we can't talk about it because everybody fights about it all the time. Because you got that and you got that. What about this? What about that? Where you can look at both sides all the time and make your own mind up instead of letting some damn corporate news network do it for you. That's my story. That's my, that's my, my piece for today. That's my opinion. This world would be, and especially the United States, but it's the same in Canada. It's the same everywhere. I mean... This world would be such a much happier place if people would just open their minds, stop being so stolid and closed-minded all the time, and just give... I watch both sides of the news networks. I prefer one particular one because I think that they're more accurate, but I do watch, you know... The other ones because i need to know what people are saying sometimes the one that i like to watch sometimes they disappoint me sometimes most of the time they don't a lot of the other times when i watch the other one it's like that one pisses me off but i still watch it because i think i need to be able to keep an open mind and not get mad at somebody i think that the point i'm trying to make here is really bottom line after i fuel my fuel my uh, body is stop being so closed-minded to all you people who are stop being so closed-minded I'm I'm I do like I said I have my I have my preferences and my beliefs I have sort of made my mind up, you know, based on years and years. And I'm not saying I'm a professional analyst or anything like that. But I've spent years and years and years doing this. And in doing that, I have started to lean, you know, more towards one side because it makes more sense to me. Don't you want to know the truth? Isn't that everybody's goal to know the truth? Because it's out there. Somewhere. It's out there. There is a truth. And if you think that you're hearing the truth, you need to prove to yourself that you are, because the only way to know if somebody's lying is to know the truth. And if you think you're getting the truth from your news network, well, you might want to just spend one week, one week, listening to the other news network on the other side of the aisle. And that's all I'm saying. Okay, I think I beat that horse, dead horse, to <laughs> a little bit too much. But that's my point. I've been wanting to say this for so long. And you know what? You want to be pissed off at me because you think that I'm on one particular side of the aisle that you don't agree with? That's exactly what I think is wrong. 
with things. And you, if you're pissed off at me now, you need to try to figure out why this smart guy believes what he does. Because maybe, maybe I'm not so stupid after all. Okay. Maybe you will like the Elvis CD that you were just about to delete from your hard drive. <laughs> okay. All right. That's that. I have many more of these to do. Um, I've got, a, I actually got, a, well, he sent this folder as a filler in the box. Um, so there's lots of other beers in here and they're in my fridge. And thank you, Ryan, very, very much for, uh, sending these. And, um, I, I really appreciate it. And yes, I do live in Canada. So I'm talking about, but we have the same situation here in Canada. You know, actually there's more than two sides. I think there's three it really confuses things. But anyway, so, um, yes. Thank you, Ryan. There it is. It's an awesome beer. I'm going to sit here and ponder what I just said. Mm -hmm. Great. And, uh, I, I tend not to edit these videos too much because I, I just think that they should just be raw, but you know, there might be a couple edits here, but anyway, I'm going to sit and enjoy the rest of this beer and, um, thank you very much. We'll see you on Fridays. Friday nights. Now, if you live in North America, you know, it's Friday nights. If you live in Europe, well, it's going to be Saturday mornings. Um, and if you live in uh, New Zealand or Australia, it's going to be Sunday, Saturday afternoons or whatever it is. Yeah, it's, there's different time zones. But for me, in the Toronto area, um, in Canada, a New York time zone, um, it's 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Vaughn.live slash CraigTube. And don't forget to look at TGTShirts.com to buy a shirt. You go to TGTShirts.com and then you go to the right-hand side of the screen and there's an icon there for me and then you can go and buy shirts. I'd love it if you did that. That'd be awesome. Spread the word, okay? And um, hopefully see you on Friday night. You play great tunes. I'm starting to learn how to be a DJ. <laughs> so, um, and we take Skype calls and there's an awesome chat room, probably the best chat room on the whole thing. So on a Friday night. So thank you very much. And we'll see you then. Take care guys. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Whoa.